Good morning, everybody. I want to wish everybody Shavua Tov. You should all have a great week. Um, this is the Dvar Torah broad, broadcasted by TorahAnytime.com and spoken here from Los Angeles, Magin David Synagogue. This week's parasha, Parashat Shelach, <coughs> Shelach Nechal Anashim. You know, they say over when it comes to the summertime, there was once a student who went to his Rebbe and said, Rebbe, you know, in summer, I feel depressed. I don't feel so good. So the Rebbe said, what's the matter, my, my student, my son? Is it the heat that's disturbing you? Is it the mosquitoes that are coming into your house? You know, you can get air conditioning. You can, there's different arrangements you can make today. We're living in a world of technology. So he says, Rebbe, no, it's not that. You know, he says, from the beginning of the summer, from last week's parasha, from Be'ha'alotecha onwards, every week I come to Shul on Shabbat, and hear the Chazan, read the Torah, and every week I get depressed. He goes, why? He goes, every parasha is full of complaints and trouble. Last week they were complaining about the meat. They remember the meat in Egypt. Miriam spoke Lashon Ara against Moshe Rabbeinu. This week, Shalach Lecha and Hashim, the spies, spoke Lashon Ara against the land of Israel. And we have next week, we have Korach, who went against Moshe Rabbeinu, the terrible story with Korach. And then we have the week after, and after, and go on, and on the whole summer, it's full of complaints and full of terrible, terrible stories. So the Rebbe said, if that's your complaint, if that's why you're depressed, it's fine. Then you're on a very high level. And the truth is, you know, we come to shul every week, we hear the Torah, <coughs> we hear the Vray Torah, and we really, sometimes, we're not on the level, we need to find out what the Torah is talking about. When we hear the Torah from the Chazan, we know it's talking about the time in life. And that happened not only thousands of years ago, it's relevant to us today too. This week's parasha, Shalach Lecha, with that introduction, is maybe one of the hardest stories that ever occurred in our history in the desert with Moshe Rabbeinu. Shalach Lecha, God, Moshe Rabbeinu wants to, just before they go into the land of Israel, Moshe Rabbeinu wants to send spies to the land of Israel to find out how we're going to conquer the land. You know, just before you go on a war, you take war with another country, you send spies, you send to see how the land is, how you're going to fight, which side, if there's fortified walls, if there's strong people, if there are weak people, and you make your strategy in war before you go in. So Moshe Rabbeinu said, even though God is helping us here, even though God is going to make a miracle for us here, we can't just rely on a miracle, we have to find a strategy, how to go into Eretz Israel, how to fight the land, to conquer the land. The land that God promised us, the land that God told us, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, Eretz, Zavat, Halab, Devash. What happens? What happens is, they go to Eretz Israel, and the terrible thing is, we know, they come back, and they start saying, Nashon Hara, Al Dibata Eretz. The Pasuk says, they came back to Moshe Rabbeinu, and they spoke against the land, and they said, we cannot go into this land, the people are giants, the people who are being buried there every single day, Eretz Ochelet Yoshevehahi, Every time we go around, there's funerals, and so on. God made them have these funerals, especially for them, so that people will be busy eulogizing and burying the people, so these people can go and spy the land properly. But nevertheless, they came back, and they spoke terrible words, Lashon Ara, about Eretz Israel. And we know that's history. God says, you spoke about my land. You spoke about Eretz Israel. The whole purpose why I took you out of Egypt was to take you to Eretz Israel. This day is going to be a day for you. The Deravot Olam. You're going to be crying here for nothing. They got punished and they had to stay another 40 years in the desert before they can merit to go to Eretz Yisrael. God said this generation cannot merit to go to Eretz Yisrael. Besides Moshe Rabbeinu and Yoshua and Kalev ben Yifune, the rest of you have to die out here in the desert. This time you cried for nothing. A cry for nothing. Today, this day, is going to be a cry for generations. And we know this day is the day of Tisha B'Av when the two Bate Mikdash got destroyed. It's a day when the Spanish Inquisition happened, future in history. It's a day even when World War I started, and so on and on. It's not a good day for us this time and period of life. Before Moshe Rabbeinu sent them in though, he prayed for two people. He prayed for Yoshua ben Nun, his name was Hoshea, and he prayed for Kalev ben Yifune. He prayed for Hoshea ben Nun. These are the two people out of the twelve who came back and spoke good things about Eretz Israel. Each 
head of each tribe went to Eretz Yisrael to spy, and they came back and said terrible things. Only two came out and said good things. Yoshua bin Nun and Kaleb bin Yifune. Who did Moshe Rabbeinu pay, pray for? Yoshua bin Nun. The question here, Hamim will ask, and our sages will ask is, these people who went to spy the land, who were they? The heads of every tribe. Kulam Anashim, Rashi points out straight away, they were important people, they were tzaddikim. What happened over here? That only two come back and speak good things about Eretz Yisrael. Such great tzaddikim, the heads of every tribe, Go to the land of Israel and come back and say such terrible things, such Lashon Hara, Dibu Dibata Aretz, terrible things about the land of God. What happened to everybody here? What happened to all these righteous people? There are many explanations, but the best one I've ever heard, I would like to share with you today. You have to understand, these people were in the desert, the Midbar. What goes on in the Midbar, ladies and gentlemen? You're there, everything's taken care for you. The man, the manna comes down, food comes down from heaven. Your clothes, lo alehem, never got spoiled, never decayed once, never had to go to the cleaners and clean them. Miraculously, God kept us in the desert. The Bnei Israel there, everything was taken care of for us perfectly. Our bodies were washed and clean. Clothes, we never had the problem to work the land and <clears throat> make food. We never had the problem of money, any issues of, of building a house, of, of taking a mortgage, tuition for our kids, everything was set. Can you imagine the life of heaven? We were in the desert. And these people said, wow, we're going to go to the land of Israel. What's going to happen? We're going to have to roll up our sleeves. We're going to have to start working the land. We don't need this business. We don't need to have problems with tuition, have problems with mortgages in our homes. The life in the desert is Gan Eden. It's Eden. It's beautiful. We have everything taken care of for us. What a great life. We're, gonna, we're so close to God in the desert. We don't want to take that place away. We have nothing to bother us. All we have is spirituality one-on-one -on -one the whole time. When we go to Israel, we're going to be detracted by other things. We're not going to be able to be so close to God. We're not going to be able to learn the whole day like we did in the desert. We're going to have to work. We're going to have to work the land. We're going to have to work the, the ground. We're going to have to grow fruits and vegetables. We're going to have to build houses. We don't need this. It's going to take away our spirituality from God. It's going to take away our closeness to God. It's better we stay in the desert. So these tzaddikim got it wrong. They came back and they complained about the land of Israel because they wanted to stay in the desert. They didn't want to go to work. They want to work the land. They felt spirituality is the only thing they need. They didn't understand one thing. That Judaism is about both together. It's a mix. You've got to do both. You've got to work and you've got to learn Torah together. That's the mix of what Torah and Judaism is all about. You've got to step out there in the real world and you've got to go there to work. But at the same time when you work, you can sanctify God's name. You wear a kippah outside there in the world and you treat people nicely. So your job, wherever you are in the world, in the workforce where you are, you're sanctifying God at the same time. It's a mix together. That's what Judaism is about. But they never got it right. They never understood it. They thought, no, you have to just stay in the desert, get food to you, get your salary paid for you from God, and just sit down and learn the whole day. That's important. But that's not for everybody. Not everybody's on that level. And that's the mistake they made. They could have been on that level, but not the whole people is on that level. They were thinking of themselves and not for everybody else. Therefore, my friends, Moshe Rabbeinu took Hosea's name and he changed it from Hosea to Yehoshua. What's the difference? He added on the, le the little yud. What does the little yud tell me? The yud is a spiritual letter. It's <coughs> the letter of yud is spirituality. The hey that he had before is the hey, but olam hazeh. It's this world. It's physicality. With the hey, with the hey God created this world. The hey baraam, the hey baraam. Moshe Rabbeinu said to Yeshua, you need the mix together. You need the Yud and you need the hate together. And that's what we need to work on, ladies and gentlemen. We're in this world, a world of working, but at the same time, wherever we work, we can bring spirituality back into our lives as well. I wish you all a great week and Shavuot Tov.